In the name of God, my name is Mehdi Kortnavasti and in this movie we are going to talk about the chapter 2 Key Principle of Software Architecture Let's have a quick overview at the beginning The software architecture is often described as the organization or a structure of a system where the system represents a collection of components that accomplish a specific function or a set of function in other words architecture is focused on organizing components to support a specific functionality this organization of functionality is often referred to as a grouping components into area of concerns in addition to grouping of components other areas of concerns focus on interaction between the components and how different components work together this picture is an example of a software architecture and different components most popular components data layer business layer and service layer database or physical database and the presentation layer or user interface and some service external systems and the cross cutting like as a security authorization authentication operational management is a A system to control and uh, distribute the functionality of the control and security in all other uh, layers and components so each components have uh, its own functionality and there are subcomponents functionality is related together for example in the business layer business workflow business component business entities and applications in this component and in the data layer data access components data helper and service agents and finally the database and physical storage and in this component just the menu forms reports as a user interface components and here is a end user and some services in this layer connect user interface to the other layers and uh, these services may be purchased or comes from external service providers or other companies key design principles separation of concerns divide your application into distinct features with as little overlap in functionality as possible the important factor is minimization of interaction points to achieve high cohesion and low coupling. However, separating functionality at the wrong boundaries can result in high coupling and complexity between features even though they contain functionality within a feature does not significantly overlap 
single responsibility principles each component or module should be responsible only a specific feature or functionality or aggregation of cohesive functionality principle of least knowledge also known as the law of Demeter or LOD a component or object should not know about internal details of other components or objects the next principle is don't repeat yourself or DRY you should only need to specify intent in one place for example in terms of application design a specific functionality should be implemented in only one component the functionality should not be duplicated in any other component and the next principle is minimizing upfront design only design what is necessary in some case you may require front comprehensive design and testing if the cost of development or a failure in the design is very high in other cases especially for agile development you can avoid big design upfront or BDUF if your application requirements are unclear or if there is a possibility of the design evolving over time avoid making a large design effort prematurely this principle is sometimes known as a y n g n y or yangi it means you ain't gonna need it our architecture is exactly so let's look at what it is and how it relates to software design this definition from the software engineering institute is great but we will need some background information before it makes sense. Everyone agrees that software architecture is a kind of software design. Software design is all the details of the completed software. Architecture details are a subset. But how can we tell if a detail is architectural? When you are designing software, you'd ideally understand everything, consider every possible failure, and design a failure-proof system. If you've worked on systems before, this is probably what you've been trying to do with varying success. So why don't we always do that? Three reasons. Because software is usually too complex to fully understand, you have limited time, and you simply cannot identify every way that it could crash, produce bad output, run too slowly, etc. The alternative is to build a model that simplifies the problem. In our field, this is considered unusual, yet it's standard practice in every other engineering field. But a model of what exactly? We can't consider every possible failure, just like we cannot understand everything. So we decide which failures are possible or likely, that is the risk and we build a model that lets us reason about those risks. Let's say that you're building online software, like a website. You might worry about security and request spikes, and you build a model that will help you reason about those risks. If you're building embedded software, like a thermostat, you might instead be worried about memory leaks and portability to new hardware, and you'd build a model for those risks. It would be great to look at every risk, but you only have so much time. Now we're ready to answer our question about architecture and design. So here's what differentiates them. As a software developer, you think about possible failures. You choose which kinds of failures you will try to avoid. And you think about lots of possible designs, too, and exclude the ones that are susceptible to failures you're worried about. Since the system you will build is complex, you will do your reasoning with the model of the system. You will include details in your model only if they help you reason about the failures you identified. You omit other design details. This is the essence of what goes into architecture models. So as an architect, you build models of the system you're designing. The model helps you reason about and avoid the failures you're worried about. The details you include in your model are architectural. 
The full design of the system contains other details, details necessary to build the system, but not needed to reason about failures. Those details are not architectural. A design detail is architectural if and only if it can be traced back to avoiding a failure risk. That is how we decide if a design detail is architectural. Now let's return to the question, what is software architecture and how does it relate to design? Here's the definition of software architecture again, and this time it should make a lot more sense. The software architecture of a system is a set of structures needed to reason about the system, which comprise software elements, relations among them, and properties of both. Set of structures here just means models, models that you use to reason about the system. When you build models to reason through your risks, you are excluding design details, ones that are irrelevant to the risks you identified, and including architectural details, ones that are essential to understanding your system's success. We started out with a simple question, what is software architecture and how does it relate to design? To answer it, we've taken a tour through avoiding engineering failures and reasoning using models. For the software development, we face with a wide range of factors to ease of designing, implementing, deploying, testing, and maintaining the application. Let's start with the design practices. Keep design patterns, consistent, within each layer within a logical layer where possible the design of components should be consistent for a particular operation for example if you choose to use the table data or a gateway pattern to create an object that acts as a gateway to table or view in a database you should not include another pattern such as a repository which uses a different para paradigm for accessing data and initializing business entities however you may need to use different patterns for tasks in a layer that have a large variation in requirements such as an application that contains business transaction and reporting functionality for example an ERP system do not duplicate functionality within an application at the first step, we say within each layer, and here we say within an application, do not duplicate functionality. There should be only one component providing a specific functionality. This functionality should not be duplicated in any other component. This makes your components cohesive and makes it easier to optimize the component if a specific feature or functionality changes. Duplication of functionality with an application can make it difficult to implement changes. Decrease clarify clarity and introduce potential inconsistencies okay let's see three minutes short movie about the uh, uh, two technology osi model and application model in the cisco company the video looks at the application layer of the osi model and how it relates to the tcp ip model we will see how people use the application layer to communicate across the network and explain how protocols ensure services running on one kind of device can send data to and receive data from many different network devices. The OSI reference model is a layered abstract representation created as a guideline for network protocol design. In the model, information is passed from one layer to the next, starting at the top with the application layer on the transmitting host, proceeding down the hierarchy to the physical layer. 
Then the information passes over the communication channel to the destination host, where the information proceeds back up the hierarchy, ending at the application layer. Unlike the OSI model, the TCP IP application layer protocols were developed the emergence of personal computers, graphical user interfaces, and multimedia objects. This is the reason for additional layers in the OSI model. The functionality of the TCP IP application layer protocols fit roughly into the framework of the top three layers of the OSI model. The other layers in the process of passing information up and down the hierarchy work similarly in both models. The two forms of software programs, or processes, that provide access to the network within the application layer include applications and services. When we open a web browser or an instant message window, an application is started, and the program is put into the device's memory where it is executed and referred to as a process. Application layer protocols establish consistent rules for exchanging data between applications and services loaded on the participating devices. Within the application layer, protocols specify what messages are exchanged between the source and destination hosts, the syntax of control commands, the type and format of the data being transmitted, and the appropriate methods for error notification and recovery. The application layer protocols implemented on the source and destination host must match in order for communication to be successful. When people attempt to access information that is not stored on their local device, then the client-server model is initiated. In the client-server model, the device requesting the information is a client, and the device responding to the request is a server, both of which are considered to be in the application layer. In addition to the client-server model, there is also a peer-to-peer -peer model. Peer-to-peer -peer networking involves two distinct forms. The first is peer-to-peer -peer network design, and the second is peer-to-peer -peer applications. In a peer-to-peer -peer network, two or more computers are connected via a network and can share resources having a dedicated server. Each of these end devices can function as either a server or a client on a per-request basis. The most widely known TCP IP application layer protocols are those that provide for the exchange of user information. These protocols specify the format and control information necessary for many of the common internet communication functions. They include protocols for email, such as Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, or SMTP, and protocols for the web, such as Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP. Numerous other protocols are also used in the application layer. As a network professional, it is important to know how an application is able to format, transmit, and interpret messages that are sent across a data network. This knowledge will help you implement services and troubleshoot problems on your network. Okay, thank you for watching this movie. The next movie, we will continue about the next design practice concerns. Thank you.